cards to people that all mean a lot to me and all you, you all have different connections. So um, artist talk, it said uh, apostrophe S, so that would imply one, but actually it's two of us, so um, it should be S apostrophe, but we don't want to confuse people. <laughs> but um, I'm uh, just starting off actually, since he's got the book, and I have uh, this small sketchbook. He <laughs> travels with me everywhere. Um, so my intro really is just for Alan, he's my head of department. I've worked with him for, what, 18 years now? 17 years, and um, so really, uh, where am I coming from? So I just thought I'd just introduce what um, I'm about, really, and it's all pretty simple. I've kind of, I, I kind of highlighted the key words, and I start with this. It's all pretty simple, and it's just that I love to look. I really love looking, and it goes back to when I was a pupil at school, um, in the art department, Davy's here, I was his pupil with Davy, wherever she is. I'm here. She is. Um, and I remember, I loved art at school, but I remember struggling with this composition. It was an imaginative thing and everything went muddy and it really wasn't going well and I just thought, oh, it's not good. And then I remember having a class test and it was with Teddy Bear, I remember it sitting in front of me and, and working and suddenly it was like a door opened. I always remember this and I enjoyed the test. How bizarre is that? You know, I enjoyed <laughs> doing my art test and um, something emerged as I looked um, and it's not changed, that's where I'm at, it's as simple as that. I love to observe um, from the, directly from whatever it is, it could be a person, it could be a still life, it could be, um, this, and in this case it's the landscape and that leads me on to, um, my job's changed here, I teach part time here and um, it's, it's opened a big door of having time back at home and I thought, gosh, is this me now to be try and be an artist, whatever that means. I uh, battled with that, Alan's like, stop it, um, <laughs> am I an artist or not? And anyway, I walk the dogs every day and I would take the dogs out um, and before I got started, it was like half nine, ten o'clock and I hadn't got into the studio and I felt bad and guilty. And so then I thought, do you know, I love working outside, I love working from the source, I love to observe, just take my book out. So I started taking my book, my wee sketchbooks out with me, um, and then some bigger books, and, uh, and I would go with the dogs, and I just start to, to work. Um, so that is really what you're seeing through there. It's, it's where I live, it's what I live and breathe, um, and I'm responding to that. Um, and it, it, if you read the blurb, you'll see what that's all about. And, um, and Alan will go even deeper because I find it hard to put into words what I'm doing. But um, he, wrote, he wrote that blurb outside, and I, was, I read him like, yeah, nah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So um, I have so much to thank him for because he's um, believed in me. <laughs> I'm <getting> emotional. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to say a few wee things about art and what artists do, and what Jane does as an artist, uh, and just a wee bit about biography. Um, see, Jane's really uh, our Lizzie ben Bennett. I don't mean she's proud and prejudiced, uh, but <laughs> I mean she's a walker. And like Elizabeth Bennett, uh, out she goes, independent, windswept, gets muddy, uh, goes right out, Trodder, trudger, into the landscape. It's her way to be free. And uh, out in the countryside where she lives. And she goes out there to feed her eye, as she's just told you. And uh, I think that's a kind of difficulty now for a lot of people because so many people live in towns and cities. And it's one of the difficulties when you're going to engage a lot of art and poetry. Because so many artists and poetry have lived in amongst nature and uh, lived close to nature and understood it. And so uh, going for a good walk is a good way to uh, prepare yourself to go and look at a lot of art, even walks in the park in the, the city. Uh, it's a good way to learn to appreciate art if you go for walks. And uh, it's definitely a way if you want to appreciate Jane Roy's art. Jane's one of these people it needs to be at the coal face, as they say. She needs to be out there in front of the thing, at the thing. Uh, and that's got a great tradition in Scotland. Unless you are into art, you maybe don't know that, but we could go back and you get McTaggart been out there tying down his 
easel and giving it a loudy with a big and a wind blowing. Uh, you've got the colourists, the great colourists. You get uh, Joan Airdley did the same, right up to Duncan Shanks, and now we've got Jane Roy. Uh, <laughs> out there before the subject. Now that's what I want to talk. On plein air, outside, right in front of the subject, before the subject. Um, quite a different thing from an artist who might reconstruct an image of the landscape uh, from memory or doodles or even photographs back inside when you're in your studio. Uh, and it's maybe a big decision. I'd say it's the biggest decision for a landscape artist. Uh, do you work directly before the subject? Or do you take quick notes, quick wee sketches, quick doodles and reinvent it back afterwards? So you get before and you get after. Two different approaches to depicting the landscape. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with you know, one or the other. You can do both. Van Gogh <coughs> described the differences, I think. I picked up his letters the other day and I started reading one. He says, and he's, he's writing about himself. It's true, I have retouched the whole to rearrange the composition a bit, to make the touch harmonious, but all the essential work was done in a single long sitting and I changed them as little as possible when I was retouching. And when I read it, I thought, oh, so we trace a guilt here in his uh, confession. He's mixed up the before and the after. And he feels a wee bit guilty because he's more at home as a before man, right in front of the coal face. That's Jane. She's the same. Um, now, why would you make that decision? Well, it's affected by lots of different things. It's affected by your view of a relationship. Um, where do you stand in relationship to your subject? And that in itself is determined by another question, you know, a broader attitude. What the artist is going to see as truth. Uh, now for Jane, looking directly at her subject in front of it is an act of faith. It's how her art gets informed and her eyes get informed. And she's out there in amongst it because she believes she experiences the fingerprints of God. And so there's this sense of awe before the landscape. You know, Ruskin, he talked about nature and he says it was God's second book. Um, and James went out there and looked at that second book and she's looked and she's looked. In fact, she's gazed and gazed till she kind of loses herself in her looking. And when you start to lose yourself in the looking, that's when you start gazing. And in that gazing, um, it brings another thing that happens. I'm sure when I'm looking at these pictures, that's what I think happens to her. This wee word, or a big word, amazement. Gazing and amazement. Amaze, amaze. A maze of feelings, a maze of wonder, praise, fascination. And they all get wrapped up in the actual act of making a picture. Now, if you walk into the exhibition, I always tell people, you know, walking into an exhibition is like walking into a teenager's bedroom, right? I know that sounds a bit weird, but uh, you get a rough understanding of their obsessions right away, you know. Um, and just to keep the old teenage bedroom metaphor going a wee bit, um, you know, you cannot clean up and tidy a teenager's bedroom and still have the bedroom maintaining its own personality and integrity. And Jane doesn't attempt to tidy up. There's no attempt to tidy up her drawings, you know, to look, make them look like forties. Um, she resists tidying up. Tidying up's born. Right? Uh, and you should never confuse tidy with accuracy when it comes to thinking about drawing. When you're doing a drawing, 
and you're in front of the motif, you're negotiating. Uh, and it's, you're thinking there, how am I going to fill the space? There you are. Um, what am I going to do in this big white sheet? What's going to be active? What's going to be quiet? What bits am I going to leave undone? What bits am I going to really work up? You know, and you have a kind of vague notion. You sit down in there and you get a kind of vague idea of what you might do. And there's this white surface that confronts you. And it looks so perfect. You've not done anything to it. And uh, Mondrian used to talk about the, the, how he was terrified by the white surface. And he knew as once he puts the, the paint on, he's like, oh no, he's, he's got to go for it. Anyway, you can sit there and look at this beautiful white surface, but you know the point's coming as Ruskin said, when you're going to, the, the dirtying of the surface delicately, you're going to have to dirt it up, you're going to have to get wired in. Um, so here's a wee thing for you all to do when you get into the exhibition. When you're walking around, looking at the pictures, try and imagine them as white surfaces. Go and look at each picture and th try and imagine it when there was nothing on it and it was a white surface. And then, because it's there, and you, you look at it and it's blank, and you think, well, it's blank with potential. And then ask yourself this, what was Jane's first marks? What was her first few marks that she made? Where did she place them? Why did she put these ones down? And then that'll help you try and inhabit her as an artist and her decisions as an artist, the actions she made. What was in her mind? Does that need a curve? Do I need to use a straight line here? Should I stipple that? Should I scribble it? And then you'll start to really get into the whole language of what drawing's about. Whirls, strokes, hatches, all that restless, willingness to experiment that Jane so brilliantly does. But why does she do it? Well, she does it for this. It's a vindication of the natural world, the physical world, because she sees it as God's world. And I'd like to finish off just with a wee quote. This is a book we read at our book club by Marilyn Robinson called Gilead. And I think it's quite a good wee quote to finish before you go back to look. Wherever you turn your eyes, the world can shine like transfiguration. You don't have to bring a thing to it except a little willingness to see. Well, Jane's got a little, or more than a little willingness to see. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.